All right, joining me now on Inside TVT, Marcus Santos Silva, playing with Ram Nation, VCU alumni. Marcus, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Is it this is your first time playing in TBT, correct? Yeah, yeah. The first time playing in TBT. Uh, I remember when I heard about TBT my I wanna say my freshman year, when the year that they uh, the Rams VC did it the first time. And I just been following them at the end at towards the end, always in the summer. Did you have your pick between the Air Raiders and Ram Nation or did you not get that call? Oh no! The only team that called me was uh, Ram Nation. Uh, and Air Raiders, I didn't. A couple of guys on the team before, but when uh, I when I last played, we talked about it, but they didn't hit me up. Um, so I didn't get a call from the Air Raiders. So your first round matchup in TBT, which was released today, you're playing Sideline Cancer, one of the staples of TBT. How much research have you have you done? You know, in the few hours since the bracket came out about that team, if any, um, just know that they're a really good team. Uh, they got a lot of good players, and like you said, they're really known in the TBT. So that's what I really know from them right now. Absolutely. So you know, you got a pretty cool story yourself. Obviously, there's teams like Sideline Cancer who playing for a cause, alumni teams that have cool stories, but you yourself, you played basketball. And then you flipped to football, and now you're back to hoops. I want you to take me through, you know, your year ends at Texas Tech, and you make that decision. I'm going to try to be a football player. Take me from there. Um. So, honestly, the football stuff, really, like, conversations came out, I would say, my freshman year at, like, VCU. Like, people were just, like, mentioning about it. And then when I decided to transfer out of VCU, I was getting talks about people like, yo, you used to – why don't you go try fo- football right now? And I was like, that's too early. And then, like, it was started again in the back of my mind. Like, my last year at Texas Tech, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be playing. It's either me going to play overseas or might as well just try the overseas, the uh, football route. And literally after the, we lost against Duke a couple days later, I got a call from one of the Texas Tech football coaches. And it was, like, basically like, hey, Usually I began conversation, being getting calls about my team, my players, but I ended up getting calls about you as well. So then I was like, you know what? Let me start going into this and let me see it. Because I was like, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to have any regrets when I get over like, oh, what if? So then I was like, you, I, I did a lot. I did everything I did with basketball at that moment. And I was like, let me go try this football, the football route. And like the reason why I did it, because I saw – my guy, my boy, Ro, uh, Mo Ali Cox, he did it. And I also was texting him a lot about, like, how he did the transition. So I was like, you know what, let me just try it out and see how it was. So then you ended up going to training camp with the Browns. Where you, you weren't drafted by the Browns, though, correct? mm so, so you went to I training was. camp. What was that like? Um, It was it was cool. I remember – so I, I, was on, I was talking to a lot of teams – I remember the Ravens, they wanted me to come to the Ricky Main camp, and then the Colts wanted me to come to the Ricky Main camp, but then the Browns, they were the only team to call me. It was like, hey, we want to bring you for a workout. So then I went out there, did a tryout for them, and right after my tryout, they signed me. And then when I went out to mini camp, I had a lot of fun with it. I remember when I first went out there, I was just like, the day the day before, they gave us, they literally gave us our playbook. And it was like, all right. They gave us the script. It's like, you got to know this, 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 and this tomorrow. And mind you, I don't, I'm looking at the playbook like it's a different language. Like I'm talking about, I was studying from like 8 until 11 on just a couple of plays I have just to understand like, all right, what's what's these letters? What does this mean? What does this mean? Just trying, literally just trying to figure out on my own at first. So like it was definitely a big learning process. And like when I was out there, I had a lot of fun with it. Like I showed like spurts of like the potential I had, but it was just those guys got my total respect. And when I watch football on Sundays, whenever it's on my, uh, my perspective of it is completely different now. Like I understand why certain things happen. That's, that's very cool to hear. So now you're back to basketball full time. Where, where did you play this year? Uh, so I this year since so I did the XFL in Feb I got I did the XFL 
up until February. And then now I just been staying, living in Richmond, Virginia, and just been training at VCU and just staying in shape because the plan I went with my agency is to sign in the, in the fall. So right now I've just been training and just getting prepared. So maybe, maybe I jumped the gun, but do you think your football career is over? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I did. I had fun with it. I tried it to see what would happen. Now it's just time to go. And I just, me taking that year off, really showed me how much I actually missed basketball and now I'm just back locked in and everything on it. So TBT is your first professional basketball since college? Yeah. That's pretty exciting. You got to be fired up for that. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I can't wait. It's been a while. And how about not only is it your first professional basketball since college but you get to rep VCU again. That's pretty damn cool. Yeah, it was it's really cool. I remember when they hit me up, I was actually like surprised about it. And then I started to talk to the guys more about it. And I was just like, you know what? It's honestly a perfect fit to go back and play with VCU. Who are who are some of the guys on the team you're excited to get to play with? Um J Lou, uh the same my the same guys, uh Marcus Evans, uh just a lot of the guys actually. And then like for uh guys that used to play on the team too like definitely guys like i watched their game and stuff like that so i'm just really give, i'm excited to play with all of them honestly to see just, just just to see like how how it's been since for a while do you think any part of your game has improved because you played football like you um, have a higher vertical now or anything like that um uh, my vertical still the same i'll just say uh I'll say definitely I got more a little more physical and like taking bumps and context from being with the football stuff. And then also uh definitely I think helped me out even more on defense. So really just and I think also uh when I was playing at football, I was at like two I wanna say like two eighty. And then now I got down back I got back down to my playing weight two fifty five. And I'm on. I feel lighter, honestly. So I feel like I feel a little quicker out there now. Do you? Was that tough to lose that weight? Um, at the at first, when I once once I was done with once football was done, and then like I had to go back to how I lost at the beginning of that, and then getting back into playing basketball because football, it's like I think it's like seven seconds a play is, and like you're getting subbed in and out basketball. You're so I remember the first time I played, I played, I played the pickup game. I was like, "Dang, I need to get back to my basketball shape." But now I'm, I'm back at it, and it's, I'm, I, I'm happy. I'm back to where I am. Which of the Browns players that you were in camp with are good hoopers? Did you get a chance to hoop with any of them? Um. So we did. So we did a we. Uh, we had an off day, and they brought us to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Is um practice facility and i'll say honestly who who could really shoot the ball was jacoby Brissett when he was there he had a nice jump shot he could shoot it uh miles garrett you've seen all the videos he did he freak athlete but no those guys were really good and then i'm um, also they have there was a guy named uh david bell they drafted oh, yeah, of wire. course david bell they drafted him he played and he told me about his story and he he said he. I remember he hit. He said he hit a he hit a buzzer beater. He saw me video about. It. He was a hooper at his old high school. So there was there's a good amount of guys on there that's that's hooping. Guys that over there that they still believe they can still hoop and they still got game over there. Were you the best? Um, take uh, shooting wise, no, I was not known as a shooter. But I always told him like playing, like I would, like I would hold my own. I'd be like, yeah, it's going to be hard. But shooting wise, I was not. It, that was not my forte in college, so I would say I wasn't the best shooter. So, of all the aspects of basketball, you know what you're allowed to eat, what your weight has to be, ev- everything, the the flow of the game. What are you most excited about to get to do again? Because you're back to being a basketball player. Honestly, after being away from even playing from football, from honestly being with the team, like. A, 
being with just like basketball football, there's like a lot of players. Basketball, you got like I think like 15, 12 maybe. And just being just with the team aspect of everything like that. And then just being back on the court and just playing. Because I remember football, I was doing a lot of thinking. Now basketball, I don't have to think at all. So just mi- being, just missing all that stuff. Are you hoping that your film from TBT will be what your agent will be able to show to, you know, potential teams? Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, my, my agent's really good. He's been talking to a lot of teams and stuff. And, like, really this right here. My main goal is for us to go and win the thing. Like, we're just not going to be in it just to be in it. Our goal is to win it. Also, it's also going to help me out to show people, like, take off the questions. Like, all right, why did he take a year off? And if I'm still the same player I was when I, before I took the year off. So, there's like, there's a lot of positives with it, honestly. Well, if you guys do win a few games, you're really going to have a chance to prove yourself because the regional there in in West Virginia is stacked. So oh, you yeah. really go up against some some high quality players, and you know, wishing you and the team the best. Before I get you out of here, this is how I wrap up every Inside TBT interview. Turn the tables on you. Do you have a question for me? It can be anything. It can be just like we've talked about anything. Your question can be about anything. Um. What is your what matchup are you most excited to look forward to in the TBT matchup? So I know you saw the bracket and everything, except for us. Like let's take VCU and sideline cancer out of it. So there's a couple four or five matchups. Really, every four or five matchup is super exciting. I'm a I'm a Mizzou fan, and yeah. and the Show Me Squad's playing Vegas Rebellion, Mizzou or uh, UNLV alumni. But the game I'm most excited about is Shell Shock versus Gataverse which is Maryland alumni versus Florida alumni. Both are first year TBT alumni teams. So you really don't know what to expect with these guys. Big names are supposed to be showing up and playing Corey Brewer, Mello Trimble. Like it's, it's a big potential matchup. So I'm looking forward to see what that, that final product looks like. What about you? What have you seen? Um, Definitely a team that's really like stuck out. For me, and I played against them in college as Rhode Island's team. I definitely want to see how they do and all that. And then um, uh, I got to look at the bracket again even more because I saw when I only came out to that I was working now. So I just saw our our side. And then um, really just excited because I know usually there'll be there'll be upsets and everything. And also a team I like watching a lot. Uh, we are D three. I like that, and I like watching the D twos because. I was talking to one of my one of the coaches at VCU, and they were like, he was talking about like people that watch the game, they get surprised that a D three team or D two players beat these big alumni. And it's like for basketball players, you could hoop, you could hoop, like yeah. Yeah. don't let the name and everything in the division fool you. So that's what I really like about the TBT how they bring anyone in. Who's a uh, you think is going to be like a Cinderella? Go make make a run. Ooh, I think there's kind of like two answers to that. There's the Cinderella based on seed, but they're actually really good just in a tough regional. And then there's Cinderella, like, hey, people don't know a ton about these guys. Like, they got it all together towards the end. So I think the Jackson, Tennessee underdogs are going to be really good. They added Jalen Barford and DeSanta Bradford. And I've said this on every interview I've done today now, so people are going to get sick of it. But they're a six seed, but – that regional is is stacked in Louisville where like literally one through seven is kind of just like all pretty close. So yeah. like by, by number, by seed, six seed, if they won a few games, it would be, you know, Cinderella. But I really think you guys as a seven seed have a chance to, you know, win a game, win two games, you know, get a little magic, little VCU magic going. And I'm not just saying that because you're sitting on the interview right now. But I think yourselves, the Jackson underdogs, I think that that really might be it. Six seeds are going to be sneaky this year because yeah. six is 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 close to three. When you think yeah, I like it. I like our team a lot. I know like people that don't really know about us and that they just see like some guys. But like if you look down to like stats and the history of the guys that's on the team, like we we got really good players on this team. So I'm I'm really excited to get it going. Yeah, similar to college basketball where, like, you know, the VCUs and the Wichita States and the 
you know, the the smaller schools of the world that are, you know, let's say they're a 12 seed in the tournament and then their team all comes back and the next year they're like a one seed, Yeah, you know, like the, the bleed green team, North Texas alumni, they were a seven seed last year and mm-hmm. they were awesome. And now they're a two seed. Like, I feel like that could be similar with your guys team where, you know, even if it's a battle with sideline cancer and you guys go down, like, it'll be a, Hey, we're, we're a really good team yeah. next year. We shouldn't be a seven seed. So yeah. I, I think um, it's a, just a loaded field this year. Facts. And I think what's like, I think that's also just a good thing. It's like, cause a lot of the guys on TBT, they're playing, they play overseas. They're playing first division, second division, high three divisions and all that. And like people that watch in the United States, they don't know anything about that. So when they see the name, they're like, ah, uh, they, they look at, they're looking at the ranking of it. And then, then then they see the players. It's like, wait a minute, this dude, you got this team that's a rank us like a six seed, but they have high level overseas guys. So I, that's why I like mm-hmm. it about it a lot. Like, there's a lot of oh, I never heard of this guy, or and then they make their name up for themselves in the tournament. So it's definitely going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to all the games, but the West Virginia regional specifically. I mean. West Virginia, the West Virginia alumni, they're the one seed. And you could argue that, you know, all the way down to the five, six, seven seed, all those teams are capable of beating them on paper. And who knows, the eight seed could beat them. But, you know, it's just it's just a loaded, loaded region. I'm happy I don't have to play in that region, but we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, at the end of the day, man, we all always say it's, it's basketball. We've been we've been playing this since we was a kid, so I'm just real excited. Right. I I love it. I appreciate you coming on, man. Good no luck problem. to you, you and the squad, and uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> through the pavement right with it and lean with it my team win it my team win it now right with it and lean with it my team turned up when i spit it now right with it and lean with it my team win it my team win it now right with it and lean with it my team turned up when i spit it don't think that i'm playing because i'm saving the game and i said that i will be more because oh yeah that is so right You're probably just gonna mumble A lot of rappers these days really need to get them humble Cause they think they at the top They better stop before they stumble Cause I'm swiping all their bitties while they swiping right on Bumble And your girl he calls me daddy But she only calls you uncle But no we not related homie No we not some fam You never get in clubs You can't even get in sand You never get in dubs like the browns from the land When push comes to shove Wave that 